So in this video we're going to see how we can use those uh, factoring techniques to solve polynomial equations of one variable. This is a lot less likely to work in general than when we just have a quadratic, um, but there are situations that come up enough to make it worth learning. Uh, this first example should be familiar. I think we factored this already, but now we have it in an equation. And we'll show how factoring can you use to solve that equation. So uh, the first step is to get everything on one side and zero on the other side. You can see that's already done for this problem. But in general, you want to get everything on one side, zero on the other. So we can use that zero factor property. I also want to make sure that the side is distributed and combined like terms. So refer to the simplifying expressions methodology for that. The next step is to factor all the terms. And uh, we did that earlier. We saw that these all have a common factor of 3x. And when we factor that off, we have 2x squared minus x minus 15 that. Uh, and then the next step is since these factors are equal to 0, we can set each one equal to 0 independently. We get two equations. Now the first one's pretty easy, right? 3x equal to 0. Obviously, that just means that x is 0 divide by 3. This other one's a little tougher. It's a quadratic equation. Now this one factors, but in general you might have to use the quadratic formula on these. Um, we already saw how it factored before, so we won't go through that again. See the simplifying polynomial expressions video, uh, but it was something like 2x x something like that, right? Remember we need 5 times negative 3 to be negative 15. We also need 5x and negative 6x to give us the negative 1x. Uh, and so now we do this process again. We, we know that the product of these two is zero, so consider those separately. Um, let's look at the first factor. 2x plus 5 equal to zero, and we'll solve that. Um, subtract 5 from both sides. And that'll be 5 minus 5 is zero on the left, and zero minus 5 is negative 5 on the right. Then we want to divide both sides by 5, or sorry, by 2. Divide both sides by 2. And 2x divided by 2 is just x. So we get our solution is negative 5 halves. The last one is a little easier than that one. Looking at x minus 3 equal to 0, and to solve this, we simply add 3 to both sides. Negative 3 and positive 3 is 0. And 0 plus 3 is 3. So we get x equal to 3. So we get three solutions, 0, negative 5 halves, and 3. You want to check these solutions by putting them in the original equation. And you can see if you replace with 0 here, it's pretty obvious that all these just end up being 0. So 0 does work here. Uh, what if we replace them with 3? get 6 times 27 minus 3 times 9 minus 45 times 
three.3 times 9 is 27, and 45 times 3 is 135. And 162 minus 27 minus 135 is 0. So that also works. My last one to check is negative 5 halves. And let's do that with the uh, graphing calculator. So remember, we can take the negative 5 halves and store that for x. Then just type out the equation, 6x squared, sorry, 6x cubed. Um, you can get that by doing 6x and then use the exponent button, and then 3 minus 3x squared minus 45x. Ugh. So after you need these newer calculators, after you hit the exponent, you need to press the right arrow to get out of that exponent. So now minus 3x squared minus 45x. And you can see we get 0 there as well. So those all check out. Let's try looking at a second example. In this one, we do need to put all the terms on one side, and we can do that pretty easily. We'll subtract 8x squared from both sides. And on the right side, 8x squared minus 8x squared is 0. So it gets everything on one side. Can we try to factor, and uh, the con factor in both terms is x squared. And if you were to divide x to the fourth by x squared, you'd take away two of those, and that would still have two left. Uh, if you were to divide negative 8x squared by x squared, the x squareds are gone, and it's just minus 8. So there's the factored form. In this case, both factors are quadratic. So we're going to look at each one of them equal to 0. And in both, we can use the square root property because they're pretty simple. So x squared equal to 0. If you take the square root of both sides, you'll get x equals plus or minus 0. Since plus and minus 0 are the same, we just have x equal to 0 as the solution from that part. Let's look at the other part, where we look at x squared minus 8 equal to 0. Here you need to move the 8 to the other side first. So we're going to add 8 to both sides. And negative 8 and positive 8 gives us 0. And 0 plus 8 is 8. All right, we need to... Now take the square root of both sides here, and the square root of x squared is x, and the square root of 8 is an irrational number, so we'll just leave it as square root of 8. But uh, remember, when you take the square root of both sides, you need the plus or minus, so this could be negative 8, sorry, negative square root of 8, or positive square root of 8. 
We've got two solutions from that one. And we can again check these solutions pretty easily with the calculator. So 0 and negative square root of 8 and positive square root of 8. So we'll first try a 0, store that for x. And then uh, let's see what x, the next one of 4 is, it's 0. What about 8 times x squared? Also 0. Okay, so that works. Let's try negative square root of 8. And let's uh, store that for x. So x is now negative square root of 8. And let's just recall those things we typed in before. x to the fourth would be 64. And 8x squared is also 64. So that works. Let's get rid of the negative and now make x positive square root of 8. And let's check one more time. So x to the fourth is still 64, right? Because the even exponent just gets rid of the negative sign. And the same with the 8x squared. So, so those are both solutions. We have three solutions to this one. And uh, that's it.